So my name is Chris Tape and I lead the Cell Communication Lab at the UCL Cancer Institute. Uh, and my lab studies how different cell types interact and collaborate to drive cancer. So solid tumors such as bowel cancer that we work on, they comprise cancer cells and non-cancer cells that sit around uh, the cancer cells in the tumor. And that's known as the tumor microenvironment. What my lab's interested in is how the cancer cells and the healthy cells interact to drive the cancer. So in bowel cancer, it's known that the more healthy cells that's uh, that are present in a patient's tumor, the, uh, the worse the patient does. Now this is quite counterintuitive. You think the more cancer that was in the tumor, the worse the patient would do, but actually the more healthy cells that are present, the worse the patient's prognosis is. So to understand how um, cancer cells and healthy cells interact, what we did is we took um, cancer cell models uh, known as organoids, these three-dimensional avatars of patient tumors, um, and we grew them alongside healthy cells um, and then measured how the healthy cells influenced the cancer cells, both on their own, but also in their response to therapies. What we found when we did that was that cancer cells can exist um, in a very fast, uh, proliferative, fast cycling state and a very slow growing state. And there's essentially a gradient between these states that they can exist between. Um, oncogenes, so the mutations that drive cancer, they make the cells typically grow a lot faster. And this is kind of classical cancer biology um, idea. But what we found is that the microenvironmental cells, so these healthy cells, they can actually slow down cancer growth. Um, and you'd think, okay, maybe that would be good, but actually most of the drugs that we use to target uh, cancer, they re rely on the cells growing fast. So if the cells get slowed down by their environment, then the drugs that we currently use don't work as well. And that's essentially what we found in our model. So the kind of data that we generate is what's known as high dimensional data. So there's thousands of cells, thousands of measurements per cell. It's incredibly complicated and hard for any human to understand in a, you know, a surface level. So to try and understand that, we wanted to come up with an intuitive way to visualize the data. So in developmental biology, a very famous scientist known as Conrad Waddington, he came up with this idea of the Waddington landscape, and this was published around 65 years ago now. And it was a hand-drawn image of uh, cells differentiating uh, in a valley um, structure where you have stem cells at the top of the valley that gradually roll down into differentiated cells at the bottom. And this was sort of a metaphor for how cells can change um, in biology. So, this was a beautiful image, um, but it had never really been uh, developed with real data. So we thought that actually we've got all the component parts of this. We understand how cells change. We understand where a stem cell is relative to a differentiated cell. Can we put this together in a visually intuitive way? So we used some computational tools to put this all together um, and came up with these, um, what we call uh, Valley Ridge landscapes, which are Waddington-like landscapes uh, generated with real uh, single cell data from the lab. So based on the research in these papers, we believe that in colorectal cancer and bowel cancer, that stem cells exist in this slow cycling to fast cycling uh, trajectory. Um, and this is fundamental to the way the disease works. And this is independent of mutations largely. This is something that happens at the non-genetic level that the cells can change and be plastic like this. Um, now, given that we know that that happens, um, and we've shown in the paper that you can pharmacologically regulate this process with drugs, we believe that being able to change the speed that cells grow at could potentially be partnered with existing therapies to make existing therapies more effective.